I am proud to introduce my mother, Sheila Pettiford, as a Be Bold and Behold honoree. Very, very intelligent, loving, warm, um, caring, will give the shirt off her back. I call her up, mom, your grandbaby is on spring break, I need help. No problem, I'm there for a week. My daughter is wonderful. I only have one child. She broke the mold, so I decided not to have another. <laughs> My mother is a teacher by nature. I taught every grade there was to teach. There was a special program in Philadelphia, a workforce development program for people who did not have education degrees to be able to become a teacher. I felt that this was my way of giving back. So actually I was in nursing school when she was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer initially. Luce was right there for me when I came out of recovery and she has been there with me throughout this in, this entire journey. And of course, being in nursing school, that was very scary for me because I was learning about what she was going through. Also, she did not have insurance. My husband was self-employed. We had to make that decision as to who was going to be insured. So we insured him. And boom, what happens? <laughs> I went through the five years with um, having insurance through the state aid, Medicaid. I went back and forth to the oncologist as I was supposed to. I thought I was cancer free forever. Moving forward to that fateful day that I found out that I had breast cancer again. It was such a shock. And, and in the 10 years, it was almost 10 years to the day that I had gotten diagnosed the first time. No one really told me what, what I was about to encounter. I, I had to go to Dr. Google to find out that what I had was incurable. I knew I needed to know more, do more, figure it out. So I started going to these different support groups. I needed to find groups that dealt specifically with metastatic breast cancer. It was hard. It was very, very hard because people are in various stages of their health. What wasn't a part of my story was youth. I first got diagnosed with breast cancer at 45. I got diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer at 55. No, I was not uh, a 70 year old woman, but still I had lived some in my life. I saw young people, young women, 20s, 30s, children. I, I, I was just devastated because I have a, a, a daughter. My daughter is 39 years of age. Unfortunately, a very unfortunate situation happened with regard to her. I would like to talk about my friend, Malika Rowland, um, who tragically lost her life to breast cancer. One of her best friends in high school, she got diagnosed with breast cancer at 34, spread to her spine. So she was metastatic in almost immediately. And she died within a year and left a nine-year-old child. I felt like it was a little harder than my mother because we were the same age for m mere months apart. She had found a lump, got it checked. Um, this was in February, around Mardi Gras. By the time September, October had come, she was inpatient in University of Pennsylvania. I was leaving that Sunday morning or Monday morning and I called her about 6.30 and she didn't pick up and I just knew it was change of shift. I'm like, maybe she'll call me back. And she did, she called me back. That was the last time I spoke to my friend. I am so upset. That's the only word I can think of right now. I'm so upset about the number of people who are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. And I'm even more upset with the numbers of younger and younger and younger and younger people especially African-Americans. Younger people are being diagnosed with breast cancer at later stages because the medical community doesn't believe that they have breast cancer. <laughs> when that young person of 34 years of age with a nine-year-old daughter was gone, she's here one day full of life, full of life and gone the next. When I go to these conferences, I'm seeing all these young women. You never know if they're gonna be around in, a, in two months. I have a daughter, Shay. I have a grand, two granddaughters, Lily and Landy. Um, I have a sister. I have nieces. I don't want my daughter. I don't want my granddaughter. I don't want anybody to have to think that breast cancer is inevitable. 
And that's the way the language is. They keep telling us that, okay, one and eight, it's all right. It's okay. You'll, you'll, you'll survive it. Why does anybody have to go through that? Why? Where Metaviper comes into play, they are making sure that what monies are available are going to the right area. We need help. We need cures. We need ways that we can live. We need a way that this can be a manageable disease. No longer considered terminal. My mother is doing well with her her diagnosis. Some days are better than others, as with anyone. And because of that, she is reaching back and, and looking into what what can be done? What avenues can we, we take to do screening earlier? Um, have better opportunities for treatment, have better opportunities for um, access. I work right now with an with organization with um, um, NBC Alliance so that I can increase help increase the, the presence of African Americans in clinical trials. We need diversity in clinical trials. Dosage could be different. If, if the persons in most clinical trials in the past have been white, Men, how is that going to help a, a, an African American woman? I'm very, 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 very much wanting to get back into going to Capitol Hill. I want to be an advocate in person. There's a two year waiting period for you to get on Medicare. Two years. Why should anybody in the United States of America, this great country with wonderful health care, why should we die waiting for? Health coverage. This medicine that I'm taking, if it wasn't for Medicare, I wouldn't. I don't, there's no way in the world. No way. It's extremely expensive. You know, there was a bill that was trying to make the chemotherapy that is oral to be put underneath the hospitalization portion of Medicare. It's under the drug plan. Chemo, IV, chemo, oral. Still, It's still chemo. Make it so that it can be more universal and can be financially available to everybody. It's saving my life, saving my life. And I want other people's lives to be saved by such a simple change. 18 years of being diagnosed with cancer and then being in remission and then coming back with metastatic. And this woman still will walk the Ben Franklin Bridge. She is a go-getter and a fighter. Um, one that will sometimes for her own health on the back burner to go and help others. So again, this is a woman who has a terminal illness and is like, eh, yeah, I have that, but I'm still gonna go out here and do do good for others. Who does that? <laughs> who, who does that? And my mother is the one. This is so important to me, so important to me. So I hope that, that you hear my heart when I speak about how grateful I am to MetaViber, how grateful I am to anybody who's donated I would not be here if it wasn't for the advances that have taken place in metastatic treatment, in treatment of metastatic disease. The things that I am taking 28 years ago, they didn't exist. They didn't exist. And it came about through research. If you only have a dollar, every dollar counts. Please send that dollar into Metafiber because that money will be used to research for cures, not just anything, but for cures for metastatic breast cancer.